Audience, my name is Angelique Wilson, and I'm the Staffing Recruiter Manager with Professional Temp Staffing Agency and the current president of the Lacey Chamber of Commerce, your premier resource center. Today is September 3rd, 2014, and we welcome you to join our monthly forum held right here at St. Martin's University Pavilion Center in Lacey, Washington. And I present to you Stuart Ridgeway, member of our Government Affairs Committee, who's going to introduce our panel of today's candidates for County Commissioner District 3. Thank you, Angelique. Okay, before we get started, I want to got a couple of administrative things we want to go through here. First of all, welcome to our annual political forum. We've been doing this for a number of years, and it's always one of our has one of our biggest turnouts. Uh, the Government Affairs Committee is composed of Mike Jackson, Chairman. Stand up when I call your name, just so everybody can recognize you. Danny Anderson, Ken Balsley. Larry Mahoney, Mike Stedman, Lenny Greenstein, Virgil Clarkson, Madeline White, Dan Nicholson, and myself. So, uh, and what we do is we re go through the, the candidate list for the various political offices. We review any uh, referendums that are on the, on the ballot, uh, any levies, and make recommendations to the chambers whether or not uh, the chambers should support those. And sometimes the board of directors listens, and sometimes they don't. It's, so. But uh, we, we try to do all the interviewing so you don't have to try to uh, pass the information on to you. This year for our forum, we decided to only feature on, only the race for Thurston County Commission. That seemed to be the one that uh, people had the most interest in. Okay. I'll introduce the, the two candidates that are going to come up here and be part of our panel. And while they're coming up, I'd like, like to ask all the other uh, candidates for other races just to please stand in place and we'll have someone come around and you can introduce yourself and the race you're, you're in. So, uh, so with that, I'd like to ask Bud Blake and Karen Valenzuela to come up and get themselves ready for the Inquisition. <laughs> and other candidates, please stand up and Madeline and Lowell will come around and let you introduce yourselves. And please, no, no speeches. We don't have time for that today. So just introduce yourself so people will know who you are. Good afternoon. My name is Dennis Pulsifer and I'm a candidate for Thurston PUD. Commissioner District 3. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Hi, I'm Yvonne Pettis. I'm running for Thurston County Clerk. I'm happy to be here. Thanks. Good afternoon. My name's Carol Person, and I am running for Thurston County Assessor, and I thank you kindly for the invitation. Is that, that it? Okay. Okay, as I said, our candidates on the panel today are the incumbent, Karen Valenzuela, and uh, our opponent, Bud Blake. As they make their way to the podium, well, uh, well they've already done that. Okay, <laughs> okay here, here's how it's going to work today. Each candidate will be given three minutes to introduce themselves and tell why they're running for office. I will then ask our list of prepared questions, and each candidate will be given two minutes to answer each question. Mike Jackson will be our timekeeper. And he will hold up a sign when 30 seconds are left, and then a stop sign when uh, the time is up. After the completion of the last question, we'll go into our lightning round, which is uh, what most people consider the most fun part of the forum. And in front of each candidate is a paddle with a yes or no sign. And they will just, uh, for our lightning round, they will just hold that paddle up with the appropriate response to the question. Okay, are, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Okay. All right, uh, well, ladies first. Karen, you can go first. Introduce yourself. Tell us why you're running and, uh, and uh, what your plans are. Thank you, Stuart. So I'm your county commissioner. I've been your county commissioner since early 2009 when Governor Gregoire appointed me to complete the unexpired term of my predecessor, Commissioner Bob McLeod, who had to resign the office for health reasons. When I first came to this job almost six, a year, six years ago now, I told all you voters, I wanted to do three things. Uh, I wanted to establish development impact fees in the county, which the county had never done, and we did that in 2010. I told you I wanted to finish updating our long overdue critical areas ordinance, and we did that. We adopted a new critical areas ordinance in 2011. And finally, I said I also wanted to finish updating our long overdue shoreline master program. That work remains in progress. Um, we await additional funding from the State Department of Ecology to finish that. 
Along the way, commissioners have also done additional things to um, further uh, our goals in Thurston County. I serve on the Thurston County Home Consortium representing Thurston County, where we try with very limited resources to allocate money across projects and programs over the year to address homelessness and the need for additional affordable housing uh, in our community. I also represented Thurston County for two and a half years on the Sustainable Thurston Task Force, uh, work that came to com completion last year and involved more than 2,500 people across the county attending a series of meetings, helping us develop a blueprint for a more sustainable future for Thurston County. I also represent Thurston County on the Chehalis Basin uh, Flood Authority. Um, as you know, flooding in the south part of our county can be extreme in um, high rain events. And so we've made tremendous progress in the um, Chehalis Basin with the help of the state legislature. Over the last two years, we have nearly completed $28.2 million worth of um, flood reduction projects in the Chehalis Basin, uh, which covers Lewis County, Thurston County, and Grays Harbor County. I also serve on a, nev no, uh, on a number of other interjurisdictional bodies, such as Intercity Transit and um, the Thurston Regional Planning Council. And, um, and so I think I'll let it go at that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, Bud? Uh, my name is uh, Bud Blake, and I thank you very much for each one of y'all for attending here and giving me the uh, opportunity to demonstrate my credentials to be the next Thurston County Commissioner. Uh, just a two-second history about my wife and I. We uh, started right around the corner here in Lacey, um, just around the uh, Bicentennial Loop, back in 1993. So we are absolutely thrilled to be back in Lacey. It's wonderful. We think of it as home, and Lacey members are great to us. So how did I wind up here in front of you uh, to present my credentials? Uh, it started um, back when I was a, a kid, and I went to uh, the Soviet Union in uh, East Germany, and I lived in there for a while. And I came home and I said, oh my gosh, that's what I want to do is make a difference in life. And I became fluent in Russian and I joined the military. So I said, I got to make a difference that way. In that sense that I uh, was an enlisted soldier for six years, I saw some of the officers that were over, over me and some of my troops. And I said, I want to make a difference again. And I became an officer and went to the OCS Army. And I made a huge difference there in terms of uh, command and three directorates. In doing so, I rose to the senior rank of a uh, lieutenant colonel, and I handle budgets uh, anywhere from $270 million to $2.2 billion in taking care of thousands and millions of people around the world, and whether it be at, um, overseas, at home, uh, your troops, your families, uh, it's really a people business when you look at the county commissioner. Uh, and knowing that uh, it's people business, you have to listen to them, what they're saying and what they're not saying at any given time as a collective and take that and use your your analysis and move forward that they'll let you know what they what they uh, what the world needs uh, understanding that I um, I uh, presented my platform to you is that I am um, strong and prior my priority is uh, public safety that's what the people want uh, the second thing is business and environment those two things go hand in hand all times the one does not dominate the other and the other thing people really need and want and that I've seen is infrastructure. While there's not a sexy thing to talk about roads, uh, it gets you where you want to go as far as uh, your business, your pleasures in life, and obviously the responses to the emergency vehicles and so forth. And, and so uh, understanding that uh, you need a balance, and that's what I bring to the table as a county commissioner, uh, balance in life. If you tilt too much one way to the environmental side or to the business side, you, you understand what's going to happen in terms of flopping, flipping, flopping, right? So I bring a balance, and I've always led that way, especially with inclusive leadership. So understanding that, I said, um, uh, it's, uh, it's not just a balance, but you've got to take the politics out of the, out of the business of Thurston County. The people's problem in the community doesn't call for an R or a D or an I. It's a problem. You go solve it, and you move on to the next problem. So with that, we could do better. Okay, thank both of you. We we'll both appreciate you running for office, win or lose. So, okay, now we'll go into our prepared questions. Uh, we we polled 
the members of the chamber and asked them to submit questions and knowing that we didn't have a lot of time, we pared it down to about six or seven questions here that uh, we thought were most uh, germane to what uh, the county commission would be doing. Uh, in this, each of you will be given uh, two, second, uh, two minutes to answer. <laughs> and, uh, and we will alternate who goes first. We will alternate who goes first so that nobody gets an advantage. First question, uh, Thurston County, like most uh, government agencies, is facing a budget crunch in the coming years. What is your pl plan to deal with the projected budget issues moving forward if elected slash reelected? And Bud, we'll start with you on this one. Okay, with budgets, uh, the, the one thing that this county needs to do and really quick is do a survey of what actually needs to be uh, the focus. If it comes out to be public safety or, or, or environment or roads or what have you, a survey across the county will dictate what the actual requirement is. With that, you can match the resources, and then from there you can prioritize. That way everybody knows where they're going to be set in, 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 the, in the scheme of things. And additionally, audits, and I'm huge on audits. One of the budgets I have in the military, we run them every 18 months to every five years to make sure that you, make, you clean up the waste and, and, and the debt that's, that's occurred over time. That way you can take that money and move it back into from an expenditure to a revenue source there, and, and your budget's then hopefully on cue by then. Then the other thing is you've got to find gener uh, re revenue-generating sources, be it businesses, and I hate the word taxing, but you've got to bring those people those two things into the fold. From there, you should have a clean budget and it won't be inverted. You'll be up, uh, upright and moving forward. So, yeah. Okay. Karen? So, I think it's an understatement uh, to say that uh, public budgets are lean these days. And um, knowing that our 2015 budget would be not much different than our 2014 budget, Commissioner's instructions to our fellow electeds at the county and our department directors was um, to freeze your 2015 budgets at your 2014 level. We know that doing business in 2015 will be a bit more expensive than it was in 2014, but essentially what we're saying to our fellow electeds and department directors is you have to figure out a way to absorb those increases in the cost of doing business. Those increases are principally, by the way, uh, personnel costs, both in terms of wages and also in terms of benefits. So um, we're definitely feeling the pinch and the pain at the county of restricted county budgets. And I do agree with my opponent that at some point we are going to have to talk about revenue. Uh, we're not going to be talking about it um, for our 2015 budget. Um, we have worked very closely with all of our fellow electeds and department directors at the county to help them uh, figure out ways to contain their 2015 costs at 2014 levels. I've always said that if you want to know what's important to people, look at how they spend their time and their money. Thurston County's money is spent primarily on our criminal justice system. Uh, approximately 75% of our general fund budget is spent on our criminal justice system. Um, a cool 32 million of that alone goes to the Thurston County Sheriff's Office. We definitely prioritize public safety in Thurston County. Okay, thank you. Second question, and Karen, we'll start with you on this one. What are your thoughts and plans on attracting more businesses and jobs to Thurston County? So I uh, think it's also an understatement to say that our past does not necessarily predict our future. I think that um, uh, though the recession is technically over, uh, most of us know from our friends and families and neighbors that many of us are still struggling to recover from the recession that hit us in, uh, in 08. And so, um, again, revenue has got to be, at some point, a conversation that the entire community engages in. Um, when I talk to people around Thurston County, people tell me that they live here in Thurston County a lot because we all consider this to be very close to paradise. And we're pretty um, concerned about preserving what we think of as paradise. And so um, the focus of your Thurston County commissioners is to, on the one hand, preserve what we all love about this beautiful place we live in, and on the other hand, figure out a path toward a more sustainable future. And that was the focus of the Sustainable Thurston Plan that we spent two and a half years uh, developing in Thurston County. And so uh, my ideas about economic growth have primarily to do with continuing to stimulate 
um, the green economy and a much more self-reliant, uh, stronger local economy. Okay, um, well, the way I look at it as far as attracting more businesses, if you look at how Lacey uh, in the last four to five years done really well in terms of retail and, and is on an upward uptick in terms of uh, their economic um, piece, centerpiece there. Uh, if you look at downtown Olympia, it needs a lot of help in terms of their economic and the struggle that they have down there. West Olympia kind of gets a buy, they're doing all right. Thurston County is, um, is falling behind, has not had quite the success that Lacey has. So understanding that's the, the kind of the uh, roadmap or the landscape of the um, economic situation. Um, some of the things that we're going to have to do uh, is re relieve ourselves of, uh, of the restrictions and regulations to allow some of those businesses to come in. One comes to mind that's very controversial is the, is the pocket gopher. Um, that has uh, prohibited and restricted businesses to um, grow within the um, cities and obviously it restricts some of the developments in the rural areas. Uh, until we come to a happy medium, which I'm firmly uh, a one that compromise um, uh, as far as uh, getting solutions, but at the same time, you got to do the science of moving forward and getting the businesses attracted to the county and to certain areas like downtown Olympia. But that kind of structure in mind, uh, relieving ourselves or lifting some of the regulations, we'd be able to get, get businesses up and moving and attract to, this, to Thurston County. Okay, thank you. Okay, third question, and Bud, we'll start with you on this one as soon as you take a drink of water. Okay, the, the new jail remains closed, costing taxpayers millions just to maintain it. When and how will it or should it be opened? Well, um, yes, it will be open. Um, it has to be open. Uh, it's $64 million and um, almost $3 million a year keeping it uh, while it's still closed. And that's been since 2010. You can see the cost of it, that it's not getting us anywhere in Thurston County. And it's your dollars that are actually uh, going towards this empty jail. Now, with two sheriffs um, giving an advice and, uh, to uh, the commission at the time and two ballot measures where the people said, no, we don't want the, the jail, this is part of the mismanagement that uh, has been going on in Thurston County, hence the reason why I stepped up and run to run for county office. <clears throat> um, at the time, uh, there's a contract going on that possibly will come through, but it's still in mediation right now, so there's not any kind of proposal, but it calls for just tw staffing of 12 hours uh, for the jail, which really does not uh, a feasible, suitable way of doing a jail. You know, that has got to be almost 24 hours if you're going to have a jail. You can't have the inmates putting themselves to sleep and what have you, right? So, um, one of the biggest problems is uh, the transport. Uh, while it's, uh, the current jail does not have the problem of the transport, um, the tr if we were opened up the jail, the ARC, uh, then you would have that transport. And with that comes security, uh, logistics, and all that behind that. So that cost needs to be factored in. And then, of course, we need to factor in the cost of staffing the jail, which would come out to about 118 if you do the 12-hour version and about 143 if you do the 24-hour version. Um, well, to get it, you're going to need some more money. And I don't want to say the word uh, levy, but you might have to do the levy, but you can bring more businesses in uh, to, get the, to get the tax revenue off of that. And then there's an option out there. I've been talking with Fort Lewis uh, occasionally. Uh, they think that they need to redo their uh, regional control uh, correction facility. They might be able to rent it for eight to ten years. That's a uh, kind of a concept right there, but it is a solution in, in progress. So um, that's my, my take on it. Karen? I agree with my opponent that we will um, open the county jail. Uh, the one thing that stands between us and moving into the jail is a ratified uh, contract with the Corrections Deputies Union. My opponent is correct. We're still in mediation uh, with the Corrections Deputies Union about that, but very close to an agreement. And um, I will quibble a little, bit, a little bit about the cost. We spent $44 million building the jail and a little under $400,000 per year keeping it on warm closure. Nonetheless, the sheriff and the commissioners continue to work very closely together with the goal of moving into the jail. And we've got our eye on hoping that we'll be able to do that uh, by the end of this year. What my opponent is referring to about 12 hours, he's talking about the fact that we need to change our correction de corrections deputies work schedule from the current uh, 980 to what is called the modified 12-hour schedule. The corrections deputies have agreed to that. We are staffed up and ready to go 
at the moment we get a ratification of that union contract and we are fully funded, have been fully funded for the past two fiscal years to move into the jail without um, any overruns. Okay, thank you. Okay, next question. And uh, Karen, you'll start with this one. With the listing of the pocket gophers as an endangered species, what are your plans to assure adequate housing can be developed and built to accommodate the future growth of Thurston County? So um, the listing of the pocket gopher and three other species as endangered and threatened in Thurston County uh, does uh, cause a, a bit of a wrinkle in some people's development plans. Uh, that listing by the federal government, by the way, the local government had nothing to do with that, um, has compelled Thurston County staff to work closely with the feds on developing what we call our habitat conservation plan. Uh, the federal government is helping to fund the development of our habitat conservation plan. Until we have that plan completed, we won't be able to know with any certainty where and at what level of intensity we'll be able to develop in areas where that uh, threatened species exists. Um, commissioners feel strongly about uh, both the letter and the spirit of the Growth Management Act, which uh, contemplates that we focus most of our new growth in our existing urban areas. And we fortunately have lots of space left in our urban areas to accommodate the growth we're expecting over the next 25 years in Thurston County. <coughs> Okay, so to attract more housing and then the issue with the, poc uh, the pocket gopher, um, what really needed to happen was a, a, a detailed integration and mitigation plan, which never came from the, the county commissioners that are, that are currently in, in seated. Um, with that, uh, taking that into consideration, uh, you have to have kind of a compromise, of uh, order compromise, and a science of going forward. And what I mean by that is meet a happy medium between the housing and the environment. Um, what I like to do is take out an example where at the Port of Olympia out at the airport, uh, they take the solar panels and they put them into the ground and where the pocket gopher can still roam around and do the things pocket gophers do. And so uh, that way you've kind of inserted technology in life without harming the environment in that sense. What we need to do uh, as far as uh, is creative thinking. How do we bring the two together as far as uh, housing, the growth piece of the housing, and the environment as a whole, so that they complement each other and don't dominate one or the other, but at the same time move forward and be able to, to uh, accommodate both people and environment. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, next question. Although they say they just had their most successful year yet, what more can be done to keep the Thurston County Fairgrounds viable? Bud, we'll start with you. Uh, to keep the fair Thurston, fair uh, Thurston fairgrounds viable. Uh, I think there's absolutely a wonderful volunteer team out there and they have a historical knowledge in terms of what has happened in, in the past to get us to where we are today. However, there needs to be uh, energized and synergized a new thought process in terms of what the new generations want at a fair. Um, while I know that it's not always on the uh, Thurston County books and there's about a million dollars allocated towards the fair, fair, it's up to the volunteers and uh, to make the the difference in that in terms of being profitable each uh, each fair season um, and doing that uh, they need we need to actually revamp revamp ourselves rebrand ourselves to attract um, ticketed businesses such as the BMX or the equestrian but that doesn't always lend very well with the terrain as you know the fair has an up and a down portion there nonetheless uh, it has to be something that attracts some millenniums and others uh, other circuited uh, events throughout the uh, region or the country. That way they come on and, and be able to use the fairgrounds um, yearly and uh, annually. So, yeah. Kara? So Thurston County has just come off having one of our most successful annual Thurston County fairs ever. We were up this year both in terms of attendance and in terms of uh, revenue for the fair, which is a pretty helpful and encouraging thing. The fair um, had fallen on hard times for a couple of years, and so commissioners have been working pretty hard on rethinking and retooling the fair. We've added several new attractions, including something we call Savers South Sound, which features a lot of 
of local brewers and vintners and cider makers for people to have an opportunity to be exposed to uh, what's going on in our local economy. We've added live and local music, which features um, lots of local bands and a variety of other new attractions to the fair because my opponent is absolutely correct. We need to figure out what will uh, make the fair a much more attractive venue for millennials and, um, and their children and their parents as well. But if this year is any indication, we're on the right path. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next question. Karen, you'll open it, this one. Thurston County just lost a $12 million lawsuit concerning mining permits and delays in allowing operations to begin. In the future, how will you balance environmental concerns with the need to provide certainty to business so that it can operate? So, um, uh, commissioners were in trial for uh, four weeks down in Lewis County, which resulted in the jury verdict that the um, uh, questioner just asked about. And uh, this was a result of a very small, fairly routine land use decision commissioners made that um, asked for extra assurances from the proponent of the permit that in the course of conducting mining activities, no critical areas would be harmed. Mining activities are currently being uh, conducted, and as far as we know, critical areas were um, sufficiently protected and not harmed. And commissioners consider it to be our paramount duty to balance both the needs of business with protection of the environment. And in that land use decision, we felt we were doing exactly that. The risk pool to which the uh, county belongs is currently preparing our appeal of that jury verdict. Um. This particular issue is really disturbing to me because um, not only did we lose $12 million in some of the uh, other costs that are associated with that in terms of lawyer fees and what have you, um, Thurston County now um, has a reputation that um, what, after 30 seconds after I take my oath, I've got to go defend um, in the sense that another government has sued this government here, and that's unprecedented and unheard of, especially when it's another government just up the road here in Washington State. Uh, not only that, you have approximately one to 34 other county and their commissioners that are going to uh, cast a vote whether to keep Thurston County in the risk pool. That's alarming that that should even happen. Uh, so with that in mind, you can see how a business that wants to employ, uh, certain, seek out certain employees and uh, where they want to put those employees uh, to work and have their schools uh, funded by the revenue that they bring, that might scare them off. And that's not what, what Thurston County needs to be about. So we can do better there. So um, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, thank you. Okay, our, our final question before we go to the lightning round, and Bud, we'll start with you. Who are your top three donors to your campaign? Me? Yes. Oh, top three donors, yeah. <laughs> um, we don't need amounts, just the names. Uh, Olympia Master Builders, uh, League of uh, Ch Lacey Chamber of Commerce Business League, and Thurston County Realtors. Karen? So I may not uh, know the answer to that. Uh, Washington Conservation Voters uh, and uh, family members. Okay, thank you. Okay, now get, get your paddles ready for the, for the lightning round. Okay, first one. Plastic bag ban, yes or no? Okay. okay, lower the watercraft speed limit on Lake St. Clair, yes or no? Should we have a time limit on building applications approval? Yes or no? Okay. Are you a Lacey Chamber of Commerce member? <laughs> <laughs> you get, 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 got you both on that one. Okay, next one. Will the Mariners make the playoffs? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's an undecided. Okay, will the Seahawks return to the Super Bowl? <laughs> okay. Okay, I, I want to thank both of you, for take, first of all, for taking the time to run for public office. I know it takes a lot out of your personal life, and also for taking the time to come meet with us here. 
Uh, this concludes our program. I'd like to encourage the candidates and all the candidates that are out there in the audience to stay, hang around for a while. But I'm sure our chamber members have some more questions they want to ask you. If you want to become involved with the Government Affairs Committee, we meet the second Friday of each month at 1130 at the uh, restaurant in Panorama. We also have a political action committee, or PAC, called the Lacey Business League, which is separate and apart from this committee. You can contribute to this PAC on your annual dues statement by adding $20 to your dues when you pay them. And with that, we will uh, release our candidates to go get a uh, cold glass of water or tea and uh, turn it back over to Angelique. <laughs>